hello and welcome to the last haunted historically drinking for 2020. Today I want to know if you want to know where to find Marilyn Monroe today. And I want to know if you want to be able to offer Marilyn the right drink when you do find her. If you do want to know the answers to these questions, you are in the right place. We're going to talk about Marilyn Monroe and what she liked to drink, starting with a cocktail. Here we go. So Marilyn enjoyed champagne. Now because these videos are largely about making drinks, we're not going to just pour champagne. We're gonna make the champagne into a champagne cocktail. To do this, we take a sugar cube, like this one, and put it into a champagne flute. On top of that sugar cube, we add a dash of Angostura bitters. There we go. Then after the bitters, we're going to put in a twist of lemon. Normally, we would put our garnish on to the drink last. But in the case of this cocktail, we want to utilize the oils that are in the lemon peel to mitigate some of the bubbling over that can happen with champagne. Uh, champagne is super bubbly and it will overflow the glass normally. But when you add um, Angostura bitters to it, it makes it even more bubbly, creating even more of a likelihood that it will bubble over the glass. The oils in the orange peel stop the bubbles. So we are going to take the peel and stick it in our glass. I also peeled it right over the glass so that oils from the skin were splashing into the glass as I was peeling it from the orange. So there we go. Now we're going to add our champagne. Now, this is champagne from the Champagne region in France. Oftentimes people will call any sparkling wine champagne, but that's not really accurate. Champagne is from a specific place. It's from the Champagne region in France. It can only be made from certain grapes and it can only be made in a certain style. There is no replacement for Champagne. Prosecco is not Champagne. Cava is not Champagne. American sparkling wine, though there are some excellent ones that are made in, a, in the same way and are competitive with Champagne, they're not Champagne. Marilyn liked to drink Dom Perignon. That was reportedly her favorite champagne, but she was also known to drink Charles Heidsick champagne. So that's what I'm pouring now. I'm pouring a Heidsick champagne. So there we are. We have our champagne cocktail. This is one of my favorites, so I know it's going to be good, but let's taste just in case. Mmm. Oh, those tiny bubbles. Only champagne has bubbles that tiny. Oh, so good. Mm. Now, the champagne cocktail is a drink that dates back to the 1850s is the first time it was recorded in print. And it is one of the cocktails that is listed in the first cocktail book, Jerry Thomas's 196, or 1962. Uh, 1862 Bon Vivant's Companion. This is the first book that ever was solely devoted to cocktails and the champagne cocktail was in it. So it's a classic for sure. Now Marilyn Monroe, she was born on June 1st of 1926 in Los Angeles, which is where we're filming this episode. She spent much of her early years um, between LA and the San Fernando Valley, which is both part of the city of Los Angeles and a suburb of Los Angeles. 
Uh, she died also in Los Angeles on August 5th of 1962. She lived 36 turbulent years, mostly in LA, though she did spend a few in New York. We're going to look at her life through her hauntings because Marilyn Monroe is said to haunt so many places that we can actually break down the timeline of her life according to the places that she is haunted largely. So we're going to start here in the San Fernando Valley where, where I am right now. She went to Van Nuys High School not far from here and it was there that she met Jim Doherty. Now he was five years older than her. He also went to Van Nuys High School. He was the captain of the football team. He was the president of the student body, um, but he did graduate before she was there. But she met him through school stuff and when she was 16, because of unfortunate family situations, she decided to marry Jim Doherty. Neither one of them probably would have done it in other circumstances. Neither one was eager to get married, but they did. And then they spent the next few years living in different places close to Van Nuys. They lived in Van Nuys and Sherman Oaks, different places all within basically a few mile radius. And even after this time, Marilyn spent a lot of time visiting the valley. It was a place where a lot of stars hung out and she came here a lot. She has said that her time at Van Nuys High School, those early years, were some of the happiest of her life. Now, I think it's interesting that I couldn't find any reports of hauntings by Marilyn in the valley. We actually have to go over the hills into Hollywood to start hearing about her hauntings. So she married Jim in 1942. The marriage did not last for long. She divorced him in 1946. And this is when her career was really kind of starting to pick up steam. She was getting tons of modeling work. So around this time, she started staying at the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. She stayed there while she was filming movies close by and while she was doing photo shoots. Famously, her first magazine photo shoot was held at the Roosevelt Pool. Now, Marilyn's ghost is seen at that very pool. It's also seen in her favorite suite, which she came back to time and time again at the Roosevelt Hotel. She's also seen dancing in the ballroom. And famously, there's a mirror, a big full-length mirror that was in one of the rooms that she loved that people see her reflection in. They see her primping and preening herself. A while ago, that mirror was removed from the room because so many guests were freaked out by seeing the ghost in it. So the staff removed it from the room and put it in the lobby where people continued to see Marilyn Monroe's reflection in it. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, sometime in the past couple of years, the mirror was even removed from the lobby and was put into storage. So sadly, you can no longer look for Marilyn's reflection in that mirror. You can, however, still rent the Marilyn Monroe suite. You can go to the Roosevelt Hotel and stay in her suite, and you can swim in the pool. So she was staying at the Roosevelt Hotel. There were a couple years, kind of between 46 and 49, that she was staying there. And 49 is when she kind of started to become famous. She had done some really famous photo shoots at this point, and she had had some bit parts in movies. So she was, she was becoming known, but she wasn't super, she wasn't an A-lister yet at this point. It was sometime around then that Joe DiMaggio, probably the most famous baseball player in the United States at this point, saw her photo and immediately fell head over heels. So him and Marilyn met and they started dating. One of the places that they reportedly would meet 
was also in Hollywood, like the Roosevelt. It was the Knickerbocker Hotel. They would meet at the bar and restaurant there. Now Marilyn is said to again be seen in the mirror of the Knickerbocker Hotel ladies room. Unfortunately, it is no longer open to the public. It is now a senior citizen's home. So you will have to do some long-term planning to uh, be able to hopefully see her ghost in that mirror, but it is said to be there. So after mm, these couple of years where her and Joe DiMaggio were meeting at the Knickerbocker and other places, they got married in 1954 and Marilyn moved to New York City. Now she spent the next few years living in New York City. Interestingly, I also could not find reports of any Marilyn hauntings there. So no reports of her haunting the valley where she spent a lot of time and no reports of her haunting New York City where she spent a lot of time. Though there were no hauntings, she still led a very turbulent life while she was there. Less than a year after being married to Joe DiMaggio, she divorced him. The next year, she married the playwright Arthur Miller. This was in 1956. So no hauntings, but her life was still topsy-turvy. Uh, so 56, she marries Arthur Miller. Four years later, she was very famous at this point. She had become super famous, really, dating Joe DiMaggio. She had done some super, super huge hit movies. And also, the nude photo spread that she had done for a magazine had come out in the public. And um, this had really propelled her into even more fame because of some pretty, because of the very smart way that she handled it. So by 1960, she was a superstar, and she was given her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today, this star is in front of the Hollywood McDonald's. It's very easy to find, and if you find it, you just might see a pink spectral cloud hovering above it, which is said to be Marilyn Monroe's ghost visiting her star. The next year, in 1961, The Misfits was released. This was Marilyn's last movie, and it is also said to be her finest performance. It is also said that there is a casting curse over this movie because its three stars and another major actor in the film were all dead within six years of the release. Marilyn, of course, and also Clark Gable and Montgomery Cliff all died after making this movie. 61 was the same year that Marilyn Monroe divorced Arthur Miller. After her divorce, she moved back to Los Angeles. And with financial help from her former husband, Joe DiMaggio, she purchased a home in Brentwood and it was not just a simple home this was a small estate and the home was a Spanish hacienda style of building and she loved it she would go back and forth through Mexico finding just the right furniture and decoration for this place she is more often than any place else found haunting this Brentwood home. She's seen all over the grounds. She's seen by the pool, in the garage, all over the house. You don't even have to go onto the property to see her ghost because people have seen her from the street outside peeking at them over the gate. She clearly has a strong attachment to this place in Brentwood. 62, 1962, the year that she moved back to LA and bought this house, was a big year for Marilyn. It is, of course, the year that she died, but a lot happened during this year, and many of the places that she now haunts are tied to this year. First, of course, is the home in Brentwood, but then also the White House. She's said to haunt with John F. Kennedy 
the White House in Washington, D.C. 1962 is the year that if she did have an affair with Kennedy, that she was most likely to have done it. This is when they had the most opportunity, and it's also the year that she sung that ridiculously sultry version of Happy Birthday to the President. Also in 1962, she did her last photo shoot at Santa Monica Beach. While she was there doing the photo shoot, she spent a lot of time on the pier, sitting by the carousel, watching families with their children having fun on the carousel. Her ghost is now said to still sit on a bench watching the carousel, and again with the mirrors, she is said to be seen in the carousel mirrors themselves. Also, the Kel Neva Resort. This is in Lake Tahoe, and Marilyn loved going there. A week before her death, on invitation of Frank Sinatra, she went for one last visit. This visit was tragic. Um, there's no hard evidence of this, but the, the, there is a lot of soft evidence that she was physically assaulted while she was there, that she was drugged, um, sexually assaulted, maybe raped, um, and that Frank Sinatra may or may not have been involved in this. Um, it might have been why he invited her there, but the mob was definitely involved. And it may have been um, in an effort to get at John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy, both who she was rumored to have affairs with and both who the mob was having problems with at that point in time. So again, just rumors, but there's so much, I don't know, there's just so much like half evidence that points to this being true that it seems likely she, when she got back from this visit to Lake Tahoe, she got off the plane, she was dazed, disheveled, and barefoot coming off the plane, uh, which makes sense if she was drugged while she was there so that she could be raped, which is how the story goes. Now she is said to haunt the room that she loved staying at at the Kel Neva Resort, as well as the tunnels that are under the resort leading from different rooms, the rooms to the stage there, and the rooms to other places. A week later, she died in her home in Brentwood. The death was ruled a suicide. Again, though, it is speculated that this could have been murder. There are a lot of things surrounding the death that make it seem like a suicide is suspicious. Uh, I don't think we'll ever know the answer. If she was murdered, I don't know how we would find out now. Since the coroner ruled it a suicide, I think that's what it's gonna go down in history as. And maybe it was, maybe it was simply a suicide. She had a really, really hard life. Um, and a history of mental problems in her family, and it could have been, but maybe it wasn't. She was buried in Pierce Brothers Memorial Park, which is located in Westwood, um, which is right next to Brentwood. The service and her grave were paid for by Joe DiMaggio. And until he died, he sent roses to her grave twice a week. They had remained friends for her life, and he reportedly loved her until he died. Her grave stone there is now pink because so many people have kissed it. The lipstick all over it just washes to create a pink glaze over the stone. And she is said to haunt this location. You can see, again, a pink cloud floating around her grave, and sometimes even the image of Marilyn herself. 
Thank you for watching. If you like this video about Marilyn Monroe and the champagne cocktail, please hit the subscribe button below. Um, you'll get more videos like this one. And uh, yeah. Also, I accept tips on Venmo. You can find me at Sarah LM Mangoni. Um, for the week after I release this video, any tips that I get will be going to benefit No Us Without You. I'll donate 10%. It's an organization that's helping undocumented workers here in LA get food because um, many of them have been laid off from their restaurant jobs during this time of COVID and there's not a lot of support out there available for them. Okay, please drink responsibly. Alcohol abuse can lead to tragedies. Happy Halloween. Have a great one. And cheers to Marilyn Monroe. Thanks for watching.